Hello everybody. My name is Joanne Radis, also known as Josie Radis, and I'm just so honored to be here tonight to share with you some of my insights and some of my work. Uh, I have been working in the field of healing for um, over 30 years in various different forms. Um, I see private uh, virtual clients, um, all on virtual. I live in the United States, but I see clients from all over the world uh, using a system that helps to tap the unconscious. And I speak, I said, my work is called unconscious mapping. And I speak about it as really an opportunity to go into our unconscious mind and turn on a flashlight to see what may be underneath and then to bring it to the light. And so what we do is we really transform unconscious patterns into conscious choices. Every month, I like to write a piece that's based on what I've observed as a kind of collective theme from all my clients. And I think at this time, it's especially important for us to 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 hear that even though we may be isolated and we may be alone and things are very different to the way they were, although things are lightening up a little now, but still it's very important for us to know that we are on a collective journey, that we do share a collective consciousness. And so when I see my clients, I really notice that there is a collective theme um, that presents itself. And so I like to write on uh, this collective theme that I discover so that I can share it and that we can understand that we're all on this journey together, evolving our consciousness together and that we can share insights from each other that can help all of us to grow and uh, to really become more aware of what is going on within us. So I was just so delighted and I feel so honored and privileged uh, when Marissa asked me to uh, share this piece of mine with all of you. And um, I really do hope that uh, this will be enjoyable and that you will uh, benefit from it and you will find some nuggets of uh, inspiration and uh, some some nuggets for growth and also I want to make myself available if anyone has any questions or would like to discuss anything further please visit my website josieradis.com and please feel free to shoot me an email I would love to hear from you um, and also I think Marissa will share my website on this so if anybody's interested or feels called to have a session with me please reach out um, I do uh, work on a sliding scale and I make my uh, I do have specific uh, prices for South Africa so um, I would love to hear from you if you feel called in that way but for now I'm going to speak to you about holding space for our unmet needs and I really do hope that when we hear this and we realize that we're all on this together we'll feel connected on this path to developing our consciousness and awareness. So this past month, many of my clients described their feeling as a kind of bondage, as a kind of slavery of some sort, that they just felt so trapped. And it became very clear to me that what we feel is a kind of internal bondage. We are trapped by our own limiting beliefs and their payoffs. So even if everybody had equal opportunity and we were all given, you know, exactly the same opportunities and if any, everything was abolished and we could all be completely free, we will not experience freedom until we really face and change our own limiting thoughts. The power really is within us. So many of us are acutely aware, however, of our limiting belief systems. We're acutely aware of, of, of these belief systems that are keeping us trapped. So some examples of belief systems are the fact that I can't trust anyone or uh, I believe that um, I fear my own power uh, or I keep creating relationships that don't satisfy me or I stay in a relationship for years and years and years even when 
that relationship doesn't satisfy me, but I have fear about losing that relationship. Or perhaps we keep on in cycles of addiction and or we continue to go above and beyond and do things out of a sense of duty. And we, we go beyond our own capacity. So we are acutely aware of the kind of results of our limiting belief systems. But the big question is, why? Why do we continue to play out these belief systems even when we rationally know they're not true? Well, the fact of the matter is we get payoffs or dividends from these belief systems. And a payoff is like a reward or a bribe for not telling yourself the truth. Each one of our payoffs is very complex and requires a deep examination. So we, would, we need to look at when did it start and why? Why did we adopt that belief system? If we can identify the purpose or function of the belief system, it really helps to understand why we adopted that. Most of us adopt these belief systems when we're very young and we don't know what else to do with it. We don't know what else to do with the situation and we kind of shrink it down into a belief system that we can understand and that we can take responsibility for. So it makes us, it gives us a sense of power if we believe that it's my fault or I'm not good enough or I'm not worthy, then we feel that we can manage that rather than sit in the pain of, of, of something that has happened to us. And so if we can ask ourselves the question of when did it start and why, and then also it really helps to ask the question, what does this belief system give you? And that's a very, you have to be very honest and very real with yourself when you ask yourself that question, what does this belief system give you? Well, that is the payoff. So some examples of payoffs are if I continue to keep myself small and unexpressed, the payoff is I fit in, I belong, and I don't rock the boat. Or if I believe I'm not talented, the payoff is I don't have to risk ever being seen. Or if I believe I will never fit in, I never have to succeed. Or if I believe I'm not good enough, my payoff is I never get disappointed. So those are big payoffs. Those are big dividends for holding those limiting belief systems. The problem, however, is that the payoff is not really worth the self-degradation it causes because the payoff in itself is a manipulation that very often nullifies itself. For example, the payoff for protecting oneself from disappointment by believing you're not good enough simply reinforces the disappointment, but on such a fundamental level it's like you are a disappointment. And so when that kicks in on a fundamental level, this can really eventually lead to depression and hopelessness. So what is it that we're protecting ourselves from? What is it that makes it so hard for us to face what to 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 face what's really going on? Well, what it is is we are protecting ourselves from facing our unmet needs. Now that is a big statement. We are protecting ourselves from facing our unmet needs. So if I believe that I'm not good enough so that I can protect myself from disappointment, if I really, really look at it, what are my needs? My needs are for recognition. My needs are for acknowledgement. My needs are to be heard. And by putting in that belief system and having that payoff, we are protecting ourselves from really facing what our unmet needs are. So then we can never get those needs net, met because they're, they're covered up. So when we make a conscious choice to change a belief system, there is a loss. And I really do want to make that point because when we change, when we make a conscious choice to change a belief system that no longer serves us, we will have to confront feelings of fear and vulnerability. We will lose the protection of the payoff and there will be, we will be vulnerable. And that is often why we have resistance to change. 
when we honestly confront the nature of the payoff, we get a deep insight into our vulnerabilities and we get a deep insight into the area of self that we need to give attention to. So for example, if I change the belief that I'm not worth loving to a belief that I deserve the greatest love, then we have to confront the current feeling of loneliness and we have to confront and hold space for our unmet need for connection. It takes courage to be honest with ourselves. And as Carl Jung so aptly says, we cannot change anything unless we accept it. So how do we accept it? Well, we need to pay particular attention to what needs are being met by the payoff. And therein lies a roadmap to our growth, a pathway to self-actualization. When we remove the game and we look at our needs, we can literally create a pathway to responding to ourselves in kinder, more helpful ways that promote self-growth. We may not get what we need immediately. In fact, we may need to commit to simply holding space for that unmet need. Life offers us no guarantees, but by holding space for our unmet needs, we will gain a deepening in our relationship with ourselves. And this will most certainly bring about more clarity and more understanding. Once you know what your need is, then you can begin to attempt to meet that need or begin to look for what it is that actually meets your need. Until you really look, you will remain dissatisfied. Because self-knowledge will set us free. That is the only tool that we have to set us free through this process we will reclaim our self-worth and our personal power we can learn to take care of ourselves and respect our needs as important transmitters of information when we do this when we really face what our needs are we can begin to design our lives and not live in default to our limiting belief systems so the more of us that do this work of personal liberation, the more we will be able to move our world to a more peaceful place. The more of us that commit to respecting ourselves, respecting our needs, the more the world will move towards a place where there will be respect for everybody on this earth. So perhaps we need to look again and realize that when we invest in ourselves, we really are investing in humanity. It really is a service when we work on ourselves, as we push the collective consciousness into a new dimension and a deepening when we ourselves do the work. So thank you very, very much um, for hearing this. I really hope that um, it has given you uh, something to think about and um, as I said please feel free to send me emails uh, to reach out to me I would love to hear any feedback um, from anybody and um, I do really wish you all a most magnificent and blessed Sunday and a beautiful week ahead with lots of self-growth and lots of deepening and more kindness to ourselves, more kindness, more self-compassion, more holding a space instead of moving to fix it or change it, but just in an unconditional open space to listen to ourselves and listen to what it is that we really need. So thank you so much and um, I wish you all the best. Much love and many blessings. Bye now.